Okay, so I've had quite a few people come to me and say that they still don't understand DSUMP after I've tried to explain it while I'm doing runs in my chat. So I thought I'd make this video as kind of a dual purpose video to answer that question uh, as well as to become part of my yellow speedrunning guide because I think it's a really important tool to get past what is uh, you know, the hardest part in the game basically. So this video is going to make you understand DSM at the simplest level and allow you to use it in your runs. Now I'm not going to go into the super specifics of how it works and why it works. I'm just going to get you to the level where you can employ this tactic in your runs effectively. It's something that takes a lot of getting used to, it's something that takes trial and error, but it's something that you can definitely used to your advantage with a very small level of understanding. Uh, it's pretty complicated at its working level, but uh, that's not necessary information. So we're gonna bypass that and get you to the point where you can get more Nidorans more often as fast as possible. What is DSUM? Well, DSUM is essentially a cycle of encounters that is constantly occurring whether you're talking to a trainer or buying things in the mart or just standing still. Uh, it doesn't matter what you do, uh, your DSOM will always move at a constant rate. So I have provided a visual for you guys to kind of get a first look into what DSOM is. Here is our imaginary wheel of DSOM. I've included every possible encounter that you can get in the Nidoran bush uh, on this wheel. So each one of these encounters is a different uh, slot that you can consider for your DSUM. Now this wheel is constantly spinning. It's always going around and around and around no matter what you're doing. And when you get an encounter, you get a glimpse of where you are in the cycle because it's always moving at a constant rate based on time in the same order. So each time we get an encounter, we can estimate our DSUM slightly more than the last time, uh, getting more information as to where exactly we are in the cycle. Uh, there's two things that this wheel doesn't represent though, and the first one is that each of these slots are not the same size. So for example, a level 3 Radata slot is going to take a lot longer to pass by than the level 6 male Nidoran slot because the effective chance to encounter a male Nidoran is something like 6 times lower than the chance to encounter a level 3 Radata. The second thing that the wheel doesn't necessarily show is that each time you get an encounter your DSUM moves back slightly. Now for our purposes this isn't going to be that important because I'm going to give you a chart to use that accounts for this effect. So here is our handy dandy uh, DSUM chart. This chart we can use to get our first steps into DSUM and understand uh, you know, a little bit more about how it works. So the way you use this chart is you're assumed to already be in the Nidoran bush and you want to look for an encounter. And once you get that encounter, you want to match it to the listed encounter on this chart. So let's say I get a level three Pidgey, then I want to start looking at these numbers. So the blue numbers represent steps that we want to take outside of the grass, and the red numbers uh, imply the amount of steps that we want to take in the grass. This is our search phase. Once you've taken 11 steps in the grass, your DSUM will have already passed a likely chance to get a male Nidoran, so then you're going to want to take 35 steps out, and then you're going to want to take 12 steps in. So you can use this chart to start to get an idea and I do recommend you have it open when you first start doing runs for sure because it's a lot to memorize at first 
but you're generally not going to make it past the second search cycle without getting a uh, meter in or some encounter in time. Now, it's definitely worth noting that even when you're in an encounter, your DSUM is still cycling. So you need to run away from the encounter as fast as possible. You can't just sit there and read the chart and then figure out how many steps you're going to take and then run away because your DSUM is always moving. So you need to kind of get an idea on the fly. And that takes a little getting used to, but with practice, you'll begin to know the first search cycles and kind of understand where you are in the cycle a bit better. So it's definitely something that requires practice when you first start, but it's really worth it. So let's give an example. This is a run that I've gotten right up to the Nidoran bush, and it's uh, just a normal run that you might do. So I see here that I have a level four female Nidoran, and the chart says to take 13 steps out. And we got an encounter right away. So that might be a level five Pidgey. Or it's a level six male Nidoran, right on the money. So by listening to the chart and getting an encounter, uh, you know, when it says to, you will be able to get more Nidorans on average. I definitely didn't expect it to work on my first attempt, but uh, I guess I don't have to spend as long making this video as I thought. Remember, don't get discouraged if it doesn't work as well as it did for me on my first try there. DSUM is something that if it worked every time, it would be easy to get a good run in this game. But it's something that allows us to increase our chances rather than something that you could consider as a guaranteed chance. So even if you do this perfectly, you're not going to get it every time. And it's something that requires practice. So a couple of extra facts to add in closing to increase your understanding of this is that the rough length of a full cycle of DSUM from start to finish from level 3 Rattata to level 7 Pidgey is just about 13 seconds. So if you start trying to use your timer instead of the step-based chart, then that might be a helpful piece of information. Also, something else I want to talk about is the most effective way to generate encounters when you're in the bush. So if you simply step back and forth as fast as you can, you're only generating one chance per step. But if you step like this, slowly, like stopping every time you make the step, then you'll generate two chances for an encounter each time you step because you are inducing an extra turn frame. Also note that you need to hold B to walk through Pikachu while you do this. But that's it. If you still have more questions about DSUM, then feel free to ask in the comment section. This wasn't intended to give you a full and complete understanding of everything that goes on with DSUM, why it works, how it works, etc. But just to get you to a point where you can use it and develop your knowledge of it. So hopefully this helps you guys get more Nidorans on average. And I'll see you for the next part of the guide.